Well, good morning. Welcome to Radiant Church Online. We are so glad to have you with us. Uh, we are still uh, celebrating Christmas. I know as you watch this on uh, Sunday morning, it's a couple days after Christmas, but we're actually recording this a couple days before Christmas. Uh, so we're recording and then going to run out and uh, finish getting some Christmas presents and other things to get ready for the holidays. Uh, so we hope that as you're gathering with your family or your friends or just watching this, uh, wherever you're at, uh, just we hope you had a great Christmas that you're reminded about the Savior and his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, and just the incredible hope uh, that we have in Jesus Christ. Uh, we know that this has been such a difficult year in so many ways. I'm sure you are celebrating Christmas uh, probably in a way that is different than you have celebrated in the past. Um, but I also hope that as we do things differently this year, that we still encounter the same grace that comes to us in Jesus Christ, the same grace that sustains us in difficulties and unexpected uh, events and everything else that encounters us in life. We know that as we go through those, God's grace is there. His mercy is abundant. His, he is faithful. He's good. He's just, and he's with us. So I want to remind you of the hope we have in Christ and how it, it affects everything that we do, and I hope you're experiencing that. Uh, I also want to say thank you uh, to all of you that have participated in various uh, events uh, over the holidays. Um, it was made aware to me this past Sunday at church uh, that over the last uh, couple weeks or a couple months, uh, probably six to eight weeks, uh, our church uh, has delivered, we've delivered over 80 meals to families in need uh, through North Fulton Community Charities. We were also doing a gift card drive to provide uh, presents to teens in need, uh, and we uh, delivered about $1,200 worth of gift cards to North Fulton Community Charities. Uh, in addition to that, uh, a week ago, we were also able to provide uh, dinner for Beacon of Hope uh, Pregnancy Center. Uh, they have a class that, uh, that helps people that have experienced unplanned pregnancies, uh, and we just took care, we've been taking care of their meals for a, a few weeks, few months now, uh, and we covered their uh, Christmas bank banquet as well, so they could just have a wonderful time being together, singing Christmas songs, and I was able to uh, share the gospel and the hope of Christmas uh, from Matthew 1, and just explain uh, who Jesus is, what he did, why it's significant, and how it gives us hope in everything. So thank you to all of you who have been praying for the ministry of the church, uh, giving to these various causes, giving your time and finances and everything else. Uh, you've been enabling the gospel to go forward, and just in the midst of a pandemic, we have been trying to do various meetings, meeting online and in person, and just trying to organize people uh, because we know that the needs in our community don't stop because of COVID. They, they increase, and we want to be there to be a blessing to other people. So just right off the bat, I want to say thank you to all of you who have done that. Uh, very grateful for you and, and your help in, in advancing the gospel in our local community. So thanks for doing that. Um, I also want to just begin with prayer. Uh, JK is going to be teaching today. I'm very grateful for him uh, and just his, uh, just his partnership in the gospel. He's such a faithful uh, brother in Christ, and he's someone that we just, uh, I'm always learning from. I appreciate uh, it, just how God has gifted him as a teacher. I'm also grateful that uh, anytime I need help or somebody else to teach, he is willing to jump up there uh, and teach. Uh, he has done this in a variety of uh, times. Uh, he's had a difficult few months, uh, lost his job, I guess, back in July, late June, early July. Um, know it's a tough time for a job market, but God has provided for him. I think one of the first time, or one of the times he taught online, it was right after he had uh, found out he, he was going to be let go from his job, but uh, just came in, preached a faithful message, let us know afterwards, um, but also just grateful for him. He's been looking for a job, got one, uh, had a, a trial period, and just found out yesterday uh, that, that they are retaining him. Didn't come as a surprise to anybody. We know just his work ethic and just his attitude and everything. Know he's going to be a fantastic addition there, uh, but just grateful that he would be willing to, to preach to us, to share God's word. Uh, it's something that he loves to do. And so uh, grateful for him to come up here. And before he comes, uh, I just want to pray for him and pray for our morning. So if you'll bow your heads, let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you so much uh, for your grace that comes to us in Jesus Christ. And we pray that you would bless us this morning. God, help us to hear from you, to hear your word, and to uh, allow it to change our lives. Help us to press into this, to take good notes, to, to, to write down what you're showing us, uh, 
and, and what you're calling us to do as a result of us hearing your word. We pray that you bless JK, uh, empower him by your spirit to teach us and to lead us in this time. And we give you thanks for all of this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thanks. JK, come on up. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to come and uh, uh, share God's word with you all through online. As we are concluding this year, this is the last Sunday. What is the word that God wants us to hear? As we are also concluding our Christmas messages, I thought I would like to share what we have been going through in our church. Our pastor was teaching from Luke, first chapter. How do you describe yourself? What is the characteristic of each one of you? This question many times uh, you may face in your interviews. People will find it out. Same way as a family, when you come together, when you fellowship with one another, with your friends in the church, outside church, wherever you gather together as a family, how do you describe your family, characteristic of your family? It's very important that God wants us to know that. That is the reason God has given us this first chapter, a family, in Luke first chapter, we are going to see Zach Zachariah, Elizabeth's family. Even though gospel is about our Lord Jesus and his birth and his ministry and his death and resurrection, but God wants us to know about this special family. And this family I call God's spirit-filled family and their characteristic through that, God wants us to encourage us. Even though we went through a difficult time this year, that how do we face, step into the new year? I believe that this story about Zachariah, Elizabeth will teach us. First thing, what you need to know about this family. It's there in first chapter, Luke first chapter, sixth words. It's a wonderful words. It is that God's family, they are serving family, serving God faithfully. That is what we are seeing in this passage. First, Luke first chapter, sixth words. It says, both Zechariah and Elizabeth were upright in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commandments and regulation blamelessly. The meaning of this verse is that they are knowing God's word. They are coupled together, living for God's, honoring God's word. The same description also you will see in Old Testament, especially Job, first chapter, eight words. God himself testifies about Job, that he is a righteous man, blameless, and he shunned the evil, and he hated evil, and he chose the right path. That is the meaning of blameless. There is no one in this world is sinless. It is not talking about sinlessness of Zachariah and Elizabeth, but they are hungry for God's word. They are honest before God's, God's uh, law, and they were doing righteously following his commandments in their life. And they are, as you see here, God brings us this family as a servant and what kind of job they were doing. We are not told except Zachariah's job. Before that, we want to know who are all in that family. So the next words, it says, Luke 1, 7. But Zachariah and Elizabeth had no children 
and God gives us some more information. Who is the problem here? Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well along in years. Meaning, Elizabeth was the one who did not have the ability to carry a baby. God knows, and reader, we know. But Zechariah did not know that. And God reminds, even in the uh, 38th verse, 38, again, Elizabeth was barren. To Mary, uh, God was reminding that her condition. But you see, God, in spite of this, he calls them to do his work. And they were worshiping together. How do we know? You will see here, while he was serving, Zechariah was serving in the temple, that God comes to them in the form of an angel. It's, uh, it's mentioned many times here, the Lord spoke. And here, he is hearing his name mentioned. Z the angel calls Zechariah by his name. God knows your name. As you are listening, you may not know, but God knows that he knows you, where you are, and what you are doing for him. And while he was serving, God called him to do an extraordinary work. Now, for God, our inability, whether we can do or not, we have a wisdom or not, it does not matter. Our availability is the only thing, and our faithfulness is the only thing God expects from us. And here, he chose this old couple, and they were all well aged, meaning they are old couple, they are seniors. God wants in his kingdom, both young and old, to serve him. And here, God calls him and says, don't be afraid, Zachariah, and your wife is going to have a baby. You see here, they worship together. How do we know? The next verse, it says, that your prayer is answered. Probably long time ago, it is prayer for the Savior to come. That was the longing for Jewish people. Probably that would be one thing. Or his own family, not only to end here with them. They are longing for a child. It could be that is a possibility here. And here God tells the great news that his wife is going to have a baby. And then God describes that what work his son is going to do. And that I will come to that one in another point here. But you see here, not only the serving family knows God's word and obeys God personally, and they were also serving, and together they are worshiping and working together. This is the family that God introduced to us today. Are you a serving family in his kingdom? Are you worshiping together as a family? In your family, do you have family prayer? No matter what need it may be, that you can ask God. Our children, they learn from us. And this is a great opportunity that you and I can show them that we depend on God for everything in our life. Brothers and sisters, remember this. This family is a very old and they are to the end of their life career. Still, they are serving God. In spite of the society, they despise them because they don't have a child. And in fact, the Jewish uh, religion, their view is, it is they are cursed people. It does not matter for them. Their inability or what the other people they think about them, no. They want to honor God until the last breath of their life. Brothers and sisters, this is the challenge that God has bringing us this year, as we end this year, as we enter into a new year, think about this. How can you work for God as a family? How can you worship God together as a family? <clears throat> How do you know God 
and his word. Today, people have everything they do except studying God's word. Do you know, during this time, they don't have a Bible the way that we have. In our all our devices, we have Bible readily available, and we can see. But only a, a highly uh, influential people like a king, they had a copy of this, or the priest, one copy. And they were able to read and hear very rare, but these people, they were longing to obey God's word. And I want to challenge you that as a family, this year as you enter the new year, think about this. How do we serve God as a serving family? Knowing God's word and always remembering to serve him worshiping him together, working together. You may come to us and ask a pastor, show us as a family, we want to do a project to serve God. That could be a great characteristic of your family this coming new year. The second point I would like to share is this family is not only a serving God, it is a sharing family. So how do you know that? If you see the next story, where Mary was introduced to us, and the angel gave the command, and the angel gave the commission calling to carry the, our Lord Jesus. Now this young woman, now running to Elizabeth, they are related, but you see, she is coming all the way from Nazareth to close to uh, Jerusalem, where uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth were living. Now, first thing you need to notice is here that Elizabeth, an older woman, recognizes God's work in Mary's life. She did not give an advice as a counsel, hey, I'm a elderly person, I want to know that you will have a terrible time if you carry this baby to the full term. No, she understood God's unique call in her life. Not only that, she is refreshing um, like another mom for Mary. How do you know that? You can see the verse 50, uh, verse 56. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months. I'm not asking you to tell me uh, anyone who lived in your home three months. I know in our church, we have many families, they have adopted many children. Brothers and sisters, that is the characteristic that we see here, sharing our family with someone. This new year, as you enter, you can decide to bring your colleague, those who do not know the Lord, into your home. Use your home as a tool for advancing gospel and using your dining table as a tool to bring glory and honor to your, our Lord. And that fellowship God always honors. Do you know, brothers and sisters, Luke's gospel could be called gospel of families. Why? It starts with the family. It will end with the family too. At the end, you will see the church. The Lord Jesus blesses the church and he, he is departing. And you will see the end. As a family together, they were all starting their life from Jerusalem. And they are going to be witness for Judea and Galilee and ends of the earth. And as you see here, <clears throat> many times, many stories, what is written in Luke is very interesting way he characterized our Lord. He either he goes to a person's home or he is sitting at someone's home and ministering to, to their needs or having fellowship with them and eating, or he is done with that party, whatever he had, and he is coming out of the home. All the stories in Luke, he surrounded with families. And here, God shows us that these family, the first family, Zachariah and Elizabeth, they shared their life. And they recognized God's work in another person. Not only that, they refreshed 
that person encouraged Mary and they rejoiced at God's work in that person's life. No envy here. And here she, Elizabeth recognized that the Messiah is going to be coming from Mary. She is a special one. Why? And she gives a reason. 45, blessed is he who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And this is the encouragement that Mary was looking for and she gave. Have you ever encouraged anyone in your life or noticed or if you are longing for encouragement, come to our church or the, uh, wherever you are living, whichever is a worship place, where you go and hear God's word, faithfully, truthfully proclaimed. God will bring the right people to encourage. Brothers and sisters, I can tell you, this church it was a great encouragement when we went through trial in our life. And they opened up their home for me and my wife. And they counseled us. They comforted us. They guided us. I can't believe without them that I would be in this place. Same story I can tell you. Someone took care. When I came to the United States 31 years ago, even though I did not know any one of them in the church, American church where I was fellowshipping, that they hear that my wife is coming with my first daughter, three months old. We did not have all this baby shower all these things in India. But they said, we will have a baby shower in our home. They opened up their home. I, I was moved that so much love they showed on us. They shared their love and their family with us. Brothers and sisters, this new year be a blessed year for you to show God's kindness and his love to someone who did not have experience in their life. The third point I would like to share here is this family is a singing family. Last week our pastor also was mentioned about this one. I want to see from Elizabeth Zachariah's point of view. Our pastor was preaching about Mary's song. And here, after hearing the birth of the son, John, Zechariah's mouth was open, and here he is singing the song. That's mentioned in first chapter 67, verse 67 through 79. Now, God has, in a special way, kept his mouth. You cannot talk, because he could not, that, that, that story before that, it's mentioned that, he, he could not believe what God talked about his son and for about himself. Now, you may wonder, it's a judgment God pronounced on Zechariah. He could not speak until he sees his son. Now, how do we read this passage? I believe you and I are in that same category. God, our God is gracious. That's a good news that you need to hear. You don't be stuck with your past sin. God wants to use you and your family. You see, that's an example Zechariah is portrayed here, that he himself carried that all the judgment, but God still wants to use that family. He, our disobedience is not going to deny God's work. God still uses us. Brothers and sisters, if you are in the, um, you know, uh, in your past sin, whatever things that you went through, and you are still suffering the consequences, of, it should not stop you to serve God and sharing your life with someone. And here, the Zechariah is singing. Do you know this passage will, most of the wording, the phrase, everything comes from Old Testament. It describes seven characteristics of God. Who is he? He is a redeemer, meaning we are very valuable in God's sight. He wants to use us and he gave 
his only son on the cross for to redeem us. And then it says, 69, verse 69, he is a savior. He saves his people with his mighty power. And 70, 73, it says, he is a promise keeper. God always is faithful. That is the promise that we have as we enter into the new year. We do not know the future, but we know the Lord one who has called us will be with us forever. And he is the deliverer. No one can stand and stop God's work. And he is merciful, compassionate, and affectionate towards us. And he is always with us. Remember, brothers and sisters, singing family, Zachariah remembers God's character. And not only that, he rests in God's promises. He knew that there is a big challenge for him. He cannot run around with the toddler of John. He may be, uh, he may have many things in his mind. How do we, he is going to be alive till he becomes, a, he is waiting to fulfill God's promise in John. I don't know whether he saw all the things, but he trusted God. In the same way, we are now living in the period, uh, longing for the Lord to come. And in that period, how do we live? We need to live like Zachariah and Elizabeth. A family which serve God and sharing the family and singing family and here resting in God's promises. The entire Bible can be categorized in this two words here. It is written in 71 and 72. It says about God promises to David that he, there will be a king who will rule from his lineage forever and ever, 2 Samuel 7th chapter. God fulfilled in our Lord Jesus' life. And another promise is God made covenant with Abraham in Genesis 12th chapter, that through you, all the nation will be blessed. And that one, that here, one more time it is coming, every Bible book you will read, these two promises in the New Testament, it will remind us again and again, God's God is faithful. What he had promised, he will fulfill us. And then finally comes talking about praising God for his son. Many times we all have our own past. How do we raise up our children? When they misbehave, it, it will remind our past and we will be scared to death. Oh, I need to um, be very strict. I think we need to learn from Zachariah that God is a God who guides everyone. We know we don't need to be fearful of the past and seeing our children in that and guide them. And they will be confused. Here God gives them a great example of Zachariah's child. And he is looking at how Zachariah believed God's word, which was spoken through angel that his son will be going before God, preparing the way for the Lord, give people the knowledge of salvation, shining in the, as a light in the dark world, guiding our feet into the path of peace. That is the promise that God gave to Zachariah. Your son will do all these things. And his job is to raise him up. So as a singing family, he remembered God's character, he rests in God's promises, and he raises the, his child in the Lord. Not worrying about his past experience, no. He believed God's promise for that child, and he did all his best. Do you help your child to grow in the Lord strong? That is the 80th words. The child grew and became strong in the spirit. How did it happen? It is because of Zachariah and Elizabeth, a God's spirit-filled family. I end with this one, <clears throat> that God will give us this new year, be a blessed year for every one of our families to be serving family, to be sharing family and singing family. Let us close our eyes and Ask the Lord for his blessing. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for teaching us through your word and reminding us that, Lord, you are promise keeper. 
you will never leave us nor forsake us in spite of our weaknesses lord you blessed us with our children our family our wives and our husband lord we thank you for our church we thank you for all the family that you brought us together to lord spread your word in this place lord use us in this coming new year lord help each one of our family be a, an example wherever we go lord shining in the dark world for you in jesus name i pray amen 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 thanks jk just a wonderful message wonderful word to hear just about being filled with the spirit and being a family doing that as a family serving the lord together just want to encourage you to uh, to think about that think about how you can be serving the lord how your family can be serving him and more committed to him in this next year than, than you have ever been. So I uh, want to encourage you with that. Um, also want to take a moment just to mention a few other announcements. Um, one, I want to talk about uh, giving. Uh, that's something that we do regularly here. We believe that God calls us to honor him with everything we have in life, uh, with our finances, with our resources, with everything he's blessed us with. We want to uh, glorify and honor him with those things. Uh, finances is a big part of that. And so each Sunday we take time to receive an offering. And, uh, you know, scripture teaches us to, 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 to tithe, to, to give to the Lord, to uh, give to the church, to enable the ministry of the church to go forward. And we do that here. And I just want to encourage you uh, that families, Christmas is a great time uh, to reflect on that. Parents, as you uh, talk with your kids about giving, Christmas just presents a wonderful opportunity as uh, a unique time in the year where our kids uh, get some extra income and we want to teach them to honor the Lord with that. And, you know, as a church, one of the things that uh, brings me so much joy is, is when we receive offerings and we hear the dimes and quarters being dropped in. And uh, because to me, what's, what's most encouraging is just being faithful, being faithful what the Lord has called us to. Doesn't matter a dollar amount and us trying to hit a new milestone or whatever, that's not important. What is important is us growing in our faithfulness to the Lord and honoring him and, and discipling others to do that, teaching our kids to do it. So Christmas presents a wonderful opportunity to talk with your kids about giving or perhaps uh, maybe giving, uh, tithing is not something you're used to. Wonderful time in the holidays to reflect on that, to read scripture passages um, and, and, and as we receive gifts to think about how we can honor the Lord with that. So just want to encourage you uh, to, to pray about that, to consider it, and also to, to lead others in doing that, to lead your kids in developing a habit of giving. And then lastly, just want to mention our holiday schedule. Uh, we are going to be doing online services uh, for uh, today, but also next week, January 3rd. We're not doing an in-person visit. This is just a way to give some of our volunteers a break. We also realize that uh, over the holidays, people are out visiting and concern for uh, COVID and other things uh, kind of ramps up. And so we just want to acknowledge that. And we're going to take a couple weeks off of the in-person service to have a break, uh, recalibrate. We are planning on January. January 10th of doing another in-person service. Lord willing, that will be the case. We are praying for this virus uh, to, to go away, to be healed, and uh, we're praying for that to happen. So the plan right now is we will do a, an in-person service January 10th. We're going to continue doing online services uh, for the foreseeable future. We don't have a plan to stop doing those at any point. We are going to keep doing that uh, because we know people have various levels of comfort with the virus, and uh, we want to meet you where you're at. So we're trying to Accommodate for all of our different family members and where you may be. So, uh, But thank you for being a part of our service today. We hope you were encouraged by it. I just want to remind you our vision as a church. We want to worship God, love others, make a difference in the world. And so as you head out, or head about your day, wherever God is calling you, I want to, you to think about how you can take something you've learned and share it with somebody that may need some encouragement. Share with them where God is meeting you, where he's helping you and just share that grace with somebody else. Make a difference in their lives. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We hope to see you soon. Take care.